Body. This is example number one for a structural analysis of deflections using conjugate beam method. And the problem statement that we have is we're asked to calculate the slope and displacement at the free end point B of the cantilever beam using conjugate beam method. And Young's modulus E is equal to 29,000 KSI. And the moment of inertia is equal to 100 inches to the fourth power. So here's our cantilever beam. We have our fixed end is... A, and our free end is B, and we have a load acting at the midpoint. We can call it C equal to 10 kips, and we call this load, uh, call it P. And the total length is equal to 18 feet plus 18 feet, so that's 36 feet. And we're going to use... Uh, we're going to use variables instead of actual numerical values, and at the end we'll just plug in the numbers to get the actual values, and this will make things easier. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate the reactions at the fixed support. So we have a vertical reaction and a bending moment at the fixed support. So the vertical reaction, uh, using basic statics, we can see that the vertical reaction is simply equal to P, and the bending moment is equal to PL over 2. Next, we're going to construct the M over EI diagram. So here's our M, M over EI diagram. So at the fixed support, we have a bending moment equal to negative PL over 2, and then we also divide by EI. And at point C, at the location of the loading, from C to uh, at point C goes to 0. This is where the load is occurring, concentrated load. And from C to B, we have zero, uh, 0 moment, so our M over EI diagram is also 0. After this, we're going to construct a conjugate beam. So our real beam, it's fixed at A, and it's free at B. And so the conjugate beam, it's going to be free at A, and it's going to be and it's going to be fixed at B. So we're calling it A prime and B prime. So, so different, uh, different support conditions in the real, uh, so you have support conditions in the real case and then support conditions in the conjugate case. And you can look online or in your textbook, in your structural analysis textbook, and they'll show you a chart uh, which shows the support in the real case and the corresponding support in the conjugate case. And then also, we're going to draw the M over EI diagram on this conjugate beam. So it's negative PL over 2 EI at this end at A prime, and it's 0 at this location, C prime. And also, it's pointing downwards because whenever you have negative moment, it's going to be pointing downwards. And if you have positive moment, it will be pointing upwards. So it's always, always good to remember that the conjugate M over EI diagram, it's going to be pointing away from the beam. And so this M over EI diagram, it's, you can, it's analogous to the conjugate loading. And now we're going to calculate the slope at location B, at, uh, at the location that we've been asked to in the problem. And so to calculate the slope, we have to calculate, to calculate the slope at a location, we have to calculate the shear at the conjugate, in the conjugate beam. So here's our uh, simplified representation. So we have uh, this end, A prime is free, so there's no reaction here. So this end, this end B, it's fixed in the conjugate case, so we have a shear and we have a bending moment. And then the loading, the M over EI diagram, our conjugate loading, we just simplified it and made it into a resultant force. And since it's a triangular loading, so to get, the, to get the resultant, we just used a formula for the triangle area, base times height divided by 2. So this is our height, negative PL over 2 EI, times the base, L over 2, and then divide by 2. So our resultant M over EI, or you can say our resultant conjugate load, is equal to negative PL squared over 8 EI. And because it's a triangular loading, it's going to be acting at, a, at the third point away. So here's our triangle. Let me just show you in the other diagram. So going back to the rectangular, uh, triangular loading, so the resultant will be acting at the third point, somewhere over here. So this is, this is equal to 
L over 2, and then times 1 third. So that's how we got this. That's why we're showing this over here. L over 2 times 1 third. And then this is L over 2 times 2 third. And this whole thing from here to here is L over 2. Okay. So now we just use statics and we solve for the we solve for the shear at B. So it's pretty simple. Uh, so the summation of the vertical loads uh, is going to be equal to negative PL squared over AEI, AEI minus VB prime, the shear, the conjugate shear at location B. So this tells us that the conjugate shear at B or the slope at B, we say, is equal to negative PL squared over AEI. And then finally, we just plug in the numbers for the load and the length and the Young's modulus and the moment of inertia. So 10 kips is the load. The length is 36 feet. Young's modulus is 29,000 KSI. And also, don't forget to multiply by 144 to get the inches into feet squared. And then our and then our moment of inertia is equal to 1,000. And let me just check if the moment of inertia that we wrote on top is equal to 1,000. So this needs to be forgot to change this. This should be 1,000. So the moment of inertia is equal to 1,000 inches to the fourth power. And then uh, we just divide by 12 inches to the fourth to get it into feet, into the, into the correct units. And so the slope at location B is equal to negative 0 0.0080 radians. And now we need to calculate the displacement at B. So to calculate the displacement at B, we have to calculate the bending moment and the bending, uh, the conjugate bending moment at that location, and that will be equal to the displacement at B. So, going back to the simplified model that we had, so we're going to take moment about the point B here. We're going to take the moment about B. So we have negative PL squared over AEI uh, times the moment arm of the moment arm is from here to this. And that's equal to L over 2 times 2 thirds plus L over 2. And so that simplifies to L over 3 plus L over 2. So that's our moment arm for the, for the conjugate load. And that's how we got this PL squared. And also, one more thing, counterclockwise, we're saying is positive. So PL squared over AEI times L over 2 plus L over 3, which is a moment arm, plus the conjugate bending moment at location B. So we just simplify, and we get the conjugate bending moment at location B, also equal to the displacement at B, is equal to negative 5 times P times L cubed divided by 48 EI. And now, lastly, we just plug in the numbers again. And we get that the displacement or deflection at B is equal to negative 0.2413 feet or uh, equal to negative 2.9 inches. This is the end of this example. Please uh, subscribe to the channel. Check out the website. It's engineeringexamples.net. And the Facebook page, if you can, please like it. It's facebook.com slash engineeringexamples. Thanks.